In this video, we're going to look at the function and the structure of the lungs, and at how the alveoli are adapted to carry out gas exchange. In order to get the energy that they need to function, all of our cells must carry out the process of solar respiration. And for that, they need oxygen. And this is where the lungs come in. Their role is to get the oxygen that we need from the air all around us into our bloodstream, where it can be transported to the rest of the body. Whenever we breathe in, air first passes through our mouth or our nose, and then down our trachea, which is also known as the windpipe. From there, it divides between our two bronchi, and then further divides between successive branch-like structures, which we call bronchioles. Once the air has made its way through all of these branches, it reaches these small sacs that are arranged like bunches of grapes. These sacs are called alveoli and they're the site of gas exchange. Let's wipe all of this out and have a closer look at a single one of the alveoli, which we call an alveolus. The first thing to notice is that the alveoli are made up of just one layer of very thin cells, just like the blood capillaries that they're next to. This creates a really short diffusion pathway, which increases the rate that carbon dioxide and oxygen can diffuse across. Something that you can't see very well on this picture is that alveoli have a very large surface area. This is because instead of just having one, like we see here, adults actually have hundreds of millions of alveoli. And if they were all spread out flat, they would cover half a tennis court. Another feature is that the alveolar walls are moist, which allows the gases to dissolve. And this increases their rate of diffusion. Now, the blood in the capillaries that we see here has just returned to the lungs, having passed around the body. So the haemoglobin within the red blood cells will have already given up lots of its oxygen to the tissues, meaning that there won't be much left, which is why we've shown them as being blue. And as the alveoli are full of fresh oxygen, we have the perfect concentration gradient, by which the oxygen in the alveoli can infuse down that gradient into the blood. And then our nice oxygenated blood can start the cycle all over again. The carbon dioxide, on the other hand, will be at a higher concentration in the blood than the alveoli, so it can easily diffuse across. And once in the alveoli, we can just breathe it out. Now, although we showed it in this picture, it's important to remember that carbon dioxide isn't actually carried by red blood cells, like oxygen is. It's just dissolved in the blood plasma. One other thing that we wanted to point out is that everything we've shown here is happening continually, all the time. The blood keeps on moving throughout the entire process, with a constant supply of deoxygenated blood entering the capillaries and oxygenated blood leaving it. Now, you've probably noticed that when you do exercise, your breathing rate changes. And you could be asked to calculate this breathing rate and give your answer in breaths per minute. It's a pretty easy equation though. You just divide the number of breaths taken by the time in minutes that those breaths took. So if you took 42 breaths in three minutes, your breathing rate would be 14 breaths per minute. Anyway, that covers everything you need to know about the lungs. Hope you found it useful, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out.